Today, we're going to have a look at this super telephoto lens from Sigma that is available for both Eman and Elman. It goes all the way to 600 mil, so it is one of the longest super telephoto zoom lens in the market right now, especially for Elman shooters when currently there are not that many super telephoto lens available for the Elman at this moment. So, should you add this lens to your camera bag? Let me share with you my test results and thoughts in this video. Kia ora, good morning everyone, which one here, welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to have a look at the Sigma 150-600, f5-6.3 DGD and sports lens. It is a super telephoto zoom lens that is designed for full frame Sony E mount and also Leica L mount mirrors cameras. The maximum 600mm focal length make it one of the longest super telephoto lens in the market. And if you use it on the APS C E mount or L mount camera, then the 35mm equivalent focal length would be even longer, become from 225mm all the way to 900mm. As you can probably expect for a lens that can zoom all the way to 600mm, this Sigma 150-600 DGDN lens is not a small lens at all. The lens weighs at just over 2kg, so it is a pretty heavy lens as well. But to be fair, all the other lenses that can reach 600mm would weigh at least the same if not more. For example, the slightly older Sigma 150-600 sports lens for the DSLR cameras is 2.5 kg, so it is about 35% heavier than this DGDM version, and that lens is also a bit bigger as well. The construction of this lens is also very nice. It feels really solid and also very high quality. The front filter thread is 95mm, which is huge, and it will be expensive if you want to buy some filter for this lens. And the lens comes with both a normal plastic front lens cap and also a soft front cover that protects both the lens and the lens hood. I personally prefer the soft cover as it adds a bit of extra protection against bumps when you have the lens in your camera bag. It is a weather sealed lens and the weather seal is not just at the lens mount but also at a few other places to give you good weather protection. The front of the lens would extend when you zoom in and it does extend quite a lot when you reach the maximum focal length of 600mm. But this is pretty normal for a super telephoto zoom lens. And there are a bunch of switches and buttons on the lens. There is the AFL button to lock the focus. This button is customizable but it's only on supported camera. On the side here, we have the usual autofocus menu focus switch and the focus limiter switch and also a switch for you to change the image stabilization mode. There's also a custom mode switch which allow you to switch to two additional profile for different viewfinder stabilization results. If you are using a Elman Sigma camera, you can also get the optional Sigma USB dock which allow you to customize the stabilization profile and also the focus limiter settings and then store the settings to one of these custom settings mode. There is also another switch next to the zoom ring and there are three positions on the switch L, T and S. L is to lock the zoom at 150mm which is great when you are transporting the lens. T means tight so you need to use a bit of force to turn the zoom ring. This is great if you are shooting in the upward or downward angles as the lens won't change the focal length because of gravity because the front element is quite heavy. Then we have the S which stands for spoof. So in this mode, the zoom ring is very easy to turn and that's what I use most of the time when I was testing this lens. The only issue with the S setting is that there is lens creep very easily because of the big heavy front elements of the lens. The lens has an integrated tripod collar which is made of metal and it is really solid. You can rotate it and it has a click at every 90 degree and that allows you to switch between landscape and portrait mode very quickly and also precisely. 
It is also Arca Swiss compatible, so it is great if your tripod takes the Arca Swiss quick release plates. However, if you want to remove the tripod collar, it is not exactly super easy. You will need to unscrew the four screws at the bottom to remove the base of the tripod collar. With the l version, there are two optional teleconverters. There is a 1.4 time and a 2 times teleconverter. So you can get up to 1200mm focal length with autofocus with the 2 times teleconverter attached. So that is pretty insane. But the maximum aperture will be dropped to around f13 when you have the 2 times teleconverter attached at the maximum focal length. I didn't have a chance to try out the teleconverter, so I can't really comment much about the performance. For some reason, the teleconverters are not available for the Sony E mount version. This Sigma 150 to 600 DGDN lens uses stepping autofocus motor, and the autofocus performance is good. I said good because it is pretty decent and it is also pretty quiet as well, but it is certainly not the fastest autofocus lens that I've ever used. I went out with this lens and my Panasonic Lumix S5 one of the weekend to try capture some bird in flight photos. I would say I do get quite a bit of out of focus photos and that may largely because of the Panasonic Lumix S5 which we all know is not the best camera when it comes to fast focus tracking. So if you're using a E-mount camera or maybe some future L-mount camera, your result could be a lot better. Having said that, I did manage to get some very nice and very sharp photo as well. I just have to take a little bit more photos and work a little bit harder than usual. And when you are shooting fast action, I would also recommend you to use the focus limiter switch to limit the focus distance range. I found that when I do that, the overall autofocus performance would improve and the camera's autofocus system would also not get confused by some other object that you are not tracking as easily. The lens has a really good maximum magnification ratio of 0 0.34 times. That is when you are shooting at 180mm focal length and the minimum focus distance is around 60cm. And as you increase the focal length, the minimum focus distance would increase and the maximum magnification ratio would become quite a bit lower as well. Since this lens maximum aperture would change depends on the focal length, so I checked the maximum aperture at different focal length and plotted this graph. This is very easy to do with the Lumix S5 as the screen displays the focal length in real time as you are zooming in or out. This Sigma 150 to 600 DGDN sports lens has built-in optical stabilization and according to Sigma, the lens optical image stabilization is effective up to approximately 4 stop. When I mount the lens on my Panasonic Lumix S5, the camera's in-body image stabilization system will be disabled as the lens doesn't support DUIS and also the telephoto lens optical image stabilization are more effective than the in-body image stabilization at the longer focal length. I did some tests at 600mm focal length and my test results shows the lens optical stabilization is approximately 3 stops effective at 600mm. So it is not too far away from the official figure. The optical stabilization also makes a huge difference when I'm framing the photo. If I disable the stabilization, it is really hard to aim my target at 600mm as there is just too much camera shake. In terms of image sharpness, at the wide end 150mm, the center is really sharp at the maximum aperture f5. So when I stop down the lens, it makes almost no difference. The corner is still pretty sharp at f5, but you can improve it a bit if you stop it down to f6.3. At 600mm, the center is also very sharp at the maximum aperture which is now f6.3. I do see some improvement if I stop down to f8. But it is very minor so when you are shooting real world photo, it probably doesn't really matter. And if you look at the corner, the image sharpness is pretty good at the maximum aperture 
but I definitely can see some improvement when I stop down the lens slightly. But to be honest, even at the maximum aperture, the lens is already sharp enough. Since shooting with super telephoto lens means you quite often are battering with getting enough light, shutter speed. So unless you are shooting completely static scenes on a really, really solid tripod, you probably would get better image quality if you shoot at wide open so that you can shoot at a lower ISO or higher shutter speed or a bit of both, which would probably give you a better improvement in terms of image quality. Since I'm doing this review with the Panasonic Lumix S5, I was a bit curious about if the high resolution mode on the S5 can be used with this lens to capture more details. At least when you have the camera on the tripod and shooting a static scene. And I did some tests and the results is a little bit mixed. The high resolution photo that I shot at 150mm does resolve a bit more details than the normal photo. But the high resolution photo that I shot at 600mm is actually worse and probably is because of the wind or maybe some tiny ground vibration causing the image to shift a little bit too much for the high resolution mode to work properly. Thanks to the lens 9 curve aperture braid, the bokeh balls from this Sigma lens are reasonably smooth and round even when you stop down the lens a bit. I don't see any onion ring patterns as well. However, there are some pretty noticeable cat's eyes effect and bokeh clipping at the corner when shooting at the maximum aperture. I need to stop down the lens to around f11 to avoid that no matter I'm shooting at the wide or the telephoto end. When shooting scenes with really challenging background, the bokeh can look slightly busy. I think it's still very acceptable for a super telephoto zoom lens. In terms of vignetting, when shooting at the wide angle end, there is some minor vignetting at the maximum aperture which would gradually reduce when you stop down the lens. Vignetting is a bit stronger at the telephoto end but only if you are shooting wide open at f6.3. Once you stop down the lens to f8, the light fall off near the edge becomes not really noticeable. Chromatic aberration is reasonably well controlled by this Sigma lens. Most of the photos I see virtually no color fringing. And even for the few photos that I see a bit of color fringing, the amount is at a pretty low level. Distortion is usually not very important for a super telephoto lens like this Sigma 150 to 600 dgdn lens. When I go through my test photo and also my real world sample photos, I see quite minimal amount of distortion in all my photos. Super telephoto lenses are quite easily affected by lens flare. With this Sigma 150 to 600 mm lens, it can also have some lens flare when there is a strong light source in front of the lens. Actually, sometimes it doesn't have to be a very strong light source in front and I can still see some lens flare and flaring in my photos. When filming video with the Panasonic Lumix S5, the video autofocus works but it's not the fastest and it would take a bit of time to catch up any fast movement. But for relatively slow moving scene then it handles it okay. Image stabilization works quite well in video mode even when I was just hand holding the camera without any additional support. I can see some focus breathing with this lens if the focus distance is only changing between 10 meter to infinity, then there is only very small amount of focus breathing. Okay, now let's talk about the things I don't like about this lens first. The first thing I don't like is that the tripod collar is quite hard to remove. Yes, I understand it is a compromise to make it more sturdy, but Quite often, I would like to take off the tripod collar when I'm doing some handheld shooting. Then I would put it back when I switch back and want to shoot on a tripod or a monopod. This is not easy at all with this lens and I need to carry some tools with me as well. And the second thing is, 
I feel there are a few things that is missing when I use it on the Panasonic Elman body. For example, I would like to see the dual IS mode works, which could further improve the image stabilization performance. Maybe I've missed, but I also can't find how to customize the button on the lens. And my camera actually locks up once completely when I was testing this lens. So while none of this is a deal breaker, if you want to buy this lens for your Panasonic body, I just feel I'm not getting 100% of this lens. And that's pretty much all the things I don't like about this lens. And now let's talk about the things I like. The first thing is the image quality. The image quality is really solid with this lens. It is a very sharp lens even shooting at the maximum focal length 600mm and there's no major weakness when it comes to optical performance. And the second thing I like is the price. For a super telephoto zoom lens that can go all the way to 600mm with very solid build quality, image quality and lots of features, the price of this lens is also very attractive. Since I'm not a serious wildlife or sports photographer myself, if I want to buy a super telephoto lens, this is easily the lens that I would consider first. And the first thing I like is the ability to use it with teleconverters. While I don't have a chance to try out the teleconverters with this lens, so I don't know anything about the actual performance, but the fact that I can attach either a 1.4x or 2x teleconverter to this lens is already a huge advantage for those who think 600mm may not be quite enough for them. Thank you very much for watching this video and I hope you find it useful. Please give it a like to support me if you enjoy watching this video. And if you have any questions about this lens, please just drop a comment below.